Hi, it's Lynn Liaz, and I want to talk about spiritual warfare some more, as I mentioned yesterday. But today, I want to talk about the strongholds of the mind. Now, one of the first places Satan and his minions like to hit us the, the most is in our mind. Because if he can take root in our minds, he can pretty much so control just about anything else in our lives. He can render us um, powerless, in fact, in the kingdom of God. Here, what we're doing work on earth. And instead of doing our work on earth, we're laying over on the sidelines about to die um, helpless. Okay? But the fact of the matter is, we aren't really helpless. That's a lie. It's deception. God has given us the power through His Holy Spirit to fight and battle these demons. Now, I need to mention that depending upon the, the strength of that demon, like how deeply rooted is that demonic entity in your life or demon, demons, okay, how deeply rooted are they? The best example I can give you is picture an army of men some of those men are only armed with pistols. Some of the men are armed with swords. And some of the men are armed with everything. Full ammo, the whole nine yards. Okay? Your easiest ones to defeat are probably going to be the ones with the swords. The next up is going to be the one with the pistols. Your hardest ones to beat, which we'll call those the strong man. Those are going to be the ones that are fully equipped. So you can bet that if you're not fully equipped for the battle, you're going to be taken out, knocked down, and rendered helpless. And that is not what God wants you to be. This is the last thing he wants you to be. So as I go through my um, spiritual battle journey that I'm in right now, I'm going to utilize what the enemy's trying to do to me to help the kingdom of God by allowing you to... Um, Go through this with me, or I should I should say instead, you're letting me go through it with you. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, we can go through this together and figure out how we can nip the devil in the butt because there are some mighty things coming. And God has shown me, as well as many other believers, that his people are not ready. And when that storm comes, they're going to be quick to be blown over. And that, that is just not what he wants. He's trying to prepare his people in every way that he can. So let's take a moment here to read some scripture and we'll see what the Bible has to say about it. Now there's lots of scripture on spiritual warfare. But today, because I know everybody uses Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, including myself. Today I thought we'll do the one in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 6. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. So that tells us right there that even though our spirit is housed in this body of flesh, and the flesh comes from the earth, that we do not war against that. Our weapons are not of this world. And that's what the next verse is going to tell us. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, or of the world, or of the flesh, but mighty in God. I like that. Mighty in God. Our weapons are not carnal, but mighty in God. Meaning powerful. But powerful in what? Of ourselves? No. Powerful only in God. For doing what? Pulling down strongholds. Okay, so you can have various strongholds, but we're talking about the strongholds of the mind. So, our weapons are mighty in God for pulling down those strongholds, breaking them down. Or picture, um, picture a big stone wall. And picture that wall, just picture a, some big, huge bomb blowing up that wall, and that wall just crumbles. Okay? Now, the weapons of God... Is that huge bomb. Your stronghold's that brick wall. Okay, and that bomb, that holy bomb is going to come and it's going to knock down that, that brick wall in the name of Jesus. It's going to get rid of it. You better believe it. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible does not lie. 
casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Okay, what would be what would be a good argument in this? Um, I'm trying to think in this example here. Okay, we're talking about strongholds of the mind. So a good argument would be in reference to what the Bible is saying. Take your like this. We're gonna take our mind and we're gonna divide it in half. Okay, the left side over here is the Satan side. That's the side the devil's trying to talk on. The right side over here is the side the Holy Spirit is communicating with us. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is specifically telling you you have to do something. But then you have the enemy on the other side telling you to do something different. You have to ask the Lord for guidance, direction, and discernment. And you also have to compare whatever is being said to God's word. And then you have to listen and obey the voice of God. Kind of like in the old, uh, the cartoons, like Tom and Jerry, you'd have the angel and the devil, you know, telling each, telling from each side, coming at the person. Let's see. Now, I do want to mention also that sometimes you can have such a battle going on that just like in Ephesians chapter 6 tells us, you got fiery darts coming in every direction, and you're doing everything that you know how to do, and it is just relentless. You are going to need to fast and pray sometimes. You're going to need hands laid on you sometimes. You're going to need to be quoting scripture just like Jesus did sometimes. Okay? Maybe all the above. Depends on the strength of the stronghold you've got going on, and it also depends on the strength of your will. If your own will is holding on to something you're not supposed to be holding on to, until you fully re release that thing, come out and say, I release this person in the name of Jesus. Say it over and over. Say it every day. You got to release something. If you can't release it, then you can do all the spiritual warfare you want. God is not going to go against your own will. Okay, so uh, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So every single thought that you and I have, little thoughts, big thoughts, they have to be brought into captivity. What does that mean? Imagine taking a picture. Okay, you get your camera out, you take a picture. You're, you've captured that moment. Okay, just like that, you're going to capture every thought. Now, sometimes the thoughts can be subtle. Um, they can be thoughts that seem okay. But they're really not. So we really have to stay in Christ and we really have to pray for discernment in all of our thoughts. And then as we have thoughts, we are to halt that thought right then and there and bring it under Christ. You know, you're going to sit there and bring that thought into captivity and make that thought. You have the power through the Holy Spirit and it is your body. Okay, but if you've given your life to Christ, it is no longer your body. Your whole entire life and everything you have belongs to God. Your money, your food, your clothing, your furniture, your very home. Everything belongs to God. So you have to bring that thought into his obedience. So if you're having a lustful thought about something... You need to stop that thought right then and there. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind you, you filthy, unclean, foul, satanic spirit of lust. Get away from me. Get your hands off of me. And then quote a Bible verse. Okay, if it's a spirit of fear. Um, get your hands off of me. In the name of Jesus Christ, you foul, filthy, unclean spirit of fear. I command that you remove your hands from my thoughts at once. For it is written, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind in the name of Jesus. Get your hands off me. That's what you do. That is exactly what Jesus did. We're supposed to be like Jesus. He is our example. Okay, to be just like him. Now, that brings to mind some other things too. If there's things you're watching on TV and whatnot, and you think, well, you know, it's okay because Pastor Doug watches it. 
So I don't see a problem with that. Well, who's your role model? Pastor Doug or Jesus Christ? Remembering that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh and God, God um, loves the sinner, but he sure does hate the sin. God does not tolerate sin for too long, especially purposeful, blatant, outright sin. And when he tells you in your spirit that something is wrong and you ignore him, but you better watch out. You better be repenting for that thing. Because I'm telling you what, right now is not the time to be playing around with sin. Us Christians need to get the heck out of the devil's playground right here and right now because I'm telling you what, stuff's going to hit the fan soon. And you don't want to be caught standing in the devil's playground when that trumpet blows because if you are, you're going to be in trouble. I'm not kidding. There is little time left. God doesn't have time right now to play. God needs serious people who are serious about serving him. Serious people who are ready to give up everything that is of this world and put it behind them and carry their cross and follow him. Just as when, when Jesus came and called the disciples and the disciples left everything and followed him, well, that's what he's doing right now. Jesus is coming. He's looking for people that are going to give it all up and follow him and him alone and have no part. We are to have no appearance even of this world. So you think about that. Don't try to make excuses for it. You don't have to tell anybody. Just keep it between you and God. You think about anything in your life you're doing that gives you the appearance of the world. Don't justify it. Don't sugarcoat it because I've mentioned this so many times it's not funny. Jesus was not this new age hippie Jesus that the world has made him out to be. They made Jesus out to be, oh man, yeah, it's okay. It's okay, dude. Peace. No big deal. Keep on sinning. I'll forgive you every time because I died on the cross to make it okay for you to sin. Just peace, man. Peace. That is exactly the type of Jesus, unfortunately, that the perverted body of Christ is serving because they have become politically correct. They don't want to offend. They're more concerned about offending people than they are God. Well, I'm going to be more concerned about offending God. So if anybody out there is offended by me, don't come to my channel. If you don't want to get the truth and you don't want to hear the truth and that offends you, then go somewhere else because time is too short and I'm not playing around here. There is no time to play. So let's finish this verse. Casting down those arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So we have to be ready and willing. Are you ready and willing? Is, is that thing you're doing in your life, is that TV program that's ungodly worth your soul? Is that TV program that's ungodly worth the hindrance of your spiritual growth in Christ? Has he spoken to you? Are you sitting there saying, oh, well, it's just this one thing. The word of God says all things. That's exactly what the Word of God says. You know, a few years ago, there was a storm that swept through. And there was trees uprooted and laying on houses. And there were trees that were still standing firm in the, in the ground. That were unaffected. Are you going to be the tree when that storm comes? That is pulled out of the ground and tossed and thrown and destroyed and dead forever. Or are you going to be that tree that after the storm is passed, that is just standing there still untouched? It might have a few leaves that fell off. It might even have lost a couple limbs. But my goodness, that tree is still standing there in that ground, deeply rooted, unaffected. Which tree are you going to be? Because I'm telling you what, now is the time to get our roots firmly grounded and to be strong. So that we can withstand that storm that is coming. I'm telling you the truth. I do not lie to you. There is a storm unlike any other that is headed our way. It is a storm that no weather forecaster can predict. Only people who are watching the signs can predict that it's coming and that it's coming soon. Nobody knows that hour that the storm's going to hit. But it is coming. So... People need to rise up, be strong, 
get rid of everything of this world because you are not going to take it with you. Now the things of this world can pull you in and keep you here. But if you're ready to go with Christ, you can't take those things with you. Now to those of you who are saying, well, I got a little more time. Christ isn't coming back tomorrow. He could. But let's say, let's play the devil's advocate and say, well, the, I know for sure he's not. Who's to say that tomorrow morning, when you wake up, that you will wake up? My friends, we are all one heartbeat away from our last. The only reason that you and I wake up every day and we still have air in our lungs is because God allowed it. For whatever reason, God allowed it. So every morning when you wake up and those eyes open, you need to think, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you've given me another day, another chance, another chance to minister to someone, another chance to prove my love to you and to obey you, another chance to fix the wrongful things that I do. Do you know how blessed that you are every day you wake up that you got another chance? Look at all the people who don't. How many people do you think got in a car accident on the way to work that did not know Jesus? God gave them chance after chance after chance after chance, but they just kept putting it off. Don't put it off. Don't put it off another day. If there's anything in your life that you're unsure about, get rid of it. It's not worth it. Time's too short. I don't care if it's that little knickknack on your shelf that is evil or that um, magazine you subscribe to that's filled with homosexuality and, and or lustful images. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It is not worth your eternal soul. What are you going to do? You just want to barely make it to heaven by the skin of your teeth because you're going to be ashamed when you kneel before God. Let's do this together. We all, right, right now, right here, each and every one of us has something in our life, at least one thing, that we know we need to get rid of and we need to work on it. We can either do this together as, as a group, as a family, and be honest about it and do it together, or we can sit there and say, I'm not going to have any of this. Uh-uh, not me. I'm not doing it. And you can just shut down. And then when that storm comes, you will be one of those trees that gets uprooted and destroyed. It's up to you. So I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to say a quick prayer. Because I didn't pray yesterday. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Let's bow our heads and say a prayer together because we need it. And not only that, let's pray each and every day for each other. So let's say a quick prayer. Um, I'll go ahead and lead. If you just want to bow your head and close your eyes wherever you're at, clear your mind of everything that's happened today. Clear your mind of everything that's bothering you and just focus on Jesus right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you, Father. And first off, if there's anybody out there within the sound of my voice that is not saved, Father, that does not know Jesus as their personal Savior, we just give you praise and thanks that that person or those people are going to repent of all their sin and come to know Jesus Christ right now. And they will not only just come to Jesus, but they will pick up their cross and carry it and they will serve you and no longer serve this world because salvation is not a free ticket to ride. We got to pick up our cross and carry it. We have to serve the Lord. That's what it's about. And Father, I just ask that you speak to each and every one of us, reveal to us any strongholds that are in our lives, any areas where the enemy is getting in, Father, give us strength, um, give us wisdom, show us where we're faltering, Father, and I just come against these strongholds that, that bind us, Father, we are not meant to be bound by these things, we are free upon, you know, asking Jesus into our heart, asking Jesus to be the Lord of our life, we became free. We are new. We are new, cre we're new creations in you, Father. We're no longer in bondage. Lord, please let us not live in bondage. We don't have to live in bondage. We are not meant to live in bondage, Father. We are meant to be free souls because we are hidden in Jesus Christ. We are meant to be free from all the stresses and the cares and the worries. 
or even if they come up against us and hit our very home, we are meant to be spiritually free. And that means when those things hit us, we have confidence that the Lord is at work in our lives and that God is in control. No matter what, no matter how it looks, that is our confidence. That we have that confidence in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, just be with us, strengthen us, bless our families, protect our families, Lord. If, if For those of us who have children, Father, be with our children. Send your angels to go out before our children each and every day and protect them and anoint them, Father. And send angels to minister to them, Lord. Bless our entire family. Bless the husband. Bless the wife. Bless that single man and that single woman. Bless the sick and bless the healthy. Bless our friends and our enemies. We just thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless each and every one of you. I love you. Stand strong. Study that scripture that we just read. And when the devil comes up against you, quote that verse. Second, uh, was it Second Timothy 1.7? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And do a little bit more study and meditate on uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. Meditate on that. Get it in your spirit. Picture the trees. Be the tree that is grounded firmly and rooted firmly into the ground. God bless you and thank you.